That's good. Okay. Okay, so thank you for coming for my very last lecture of this uh, series on my introduction on resolution of similarity. So up until now, what we did was focus mostly by uh, on the example of curves. And we established last lecture. So it was a bit of a uh, hard proof, but uh, last lecture, technically. We uh, managed to find a, uh, uh, we, I didn't really define it yet, so this is why I'm using commas. So this is, this meant the following thing. I have a singular curve here, and here I have a smooth quasi-projective curve. Uh, and I found, I managed to find uh, a morphism from this uh, x to the other, which is birational. Meaning that the function of field doesn't change and was fine. Basically, the roughly meaning the fibers over the singular locus are finite sets. And uh, it was isomorphic uh, over uh, x the smooth points. Okay, so this was, uh, let's say, the technical achievement we arrived at last lecture. Okay, uh, so today I'm going to uh, talk a little bit more vaguely, but I will try to give you a more of a panoramic view of what's going on in the resolution of singularities. I apologize for the people who were waiting for me to do uh, stuff on valuation theory, but it would have been I've needed a couple more lectures, at least three or four. So it was a bit of a, a, bit of a uh, misleading, but uh, you know, sometimes these things happen. So, what is actually the problem of resolution of singularities? I'm trying. I'm going to try to explain uh, uh, this problem here and give you some examples, and then I'll try and give you a little bit about the state of the art. So this is the plan for the lecture today. Okay, so what is a resolution of similarities? So we'll, I'll have a couple of questions about this. Uh, a, what is a resolution of similarities? Well, the problem goes as follows. Uh, so we are given x a generally let's say a projective uh, variety with singularities. is to find two things. To find x bar a smooth, very often projective variety, and a uh, subjective morphism x bar from x. But I write very often pi, which is birational. And um, problem. Okay, so I'll explain both of these terms. Now, uh, okay, so the first one is pretty obvious why we want subjective. We want that the whole, we want some of a, a smooth version of our original curve, so we want it to be subjective. Right, so that every point here it finds avatars above. Now, 
what we did for girls was actually a bit more, uh, a bit stronger because the finiteness pro property is stronger than the proper condition. Now let's explain a little bit the both of these terms. Okay, so by writing a we already know. But let's talk a little bit about it. Now, isomorphism is too strong, right? Because if pi was an isomorphism, then any singular point would find itself up again. It's pretty common. Uh, so, let's say isom is strong. And also, this uh, irrational uh, condition also participates in the problem of birational classification. Also, the birational classification problem. Meaning that we want to find a, uh, for uh, any uh, projective uh, variety, we want to find models that are simple, right? Uh, so we want to find uh, smooth models in a bi-rational class. So, a birational class is just the equivalent class of uh, the birational morphism because birationality is an equivalent, uh, equivalent relationship. And uh, the birational problem seeks to find for any function field, so I take a variety, I take its function field, and I want to find models for that function field, meaning uh, other varieties with the same function field. Uh, right, this, yeah, okay, so. A model, what is a model? It's just any variety with the same function field. Okay. And in dimensional one, there is only one representative. Yeah, yeah, this is unique. This is, uh, okay, so that's uh, uh, another problem is that you're finding unicity or at least canonical models. For curves, there exists only one representative, one smooth representative. That's because of the uh, nice result we did on regular variational morphisms from uh, regular curves to projective space, then it is regular everywhere, and that's also for isomorphism between two models. But uh, beyond that, uh, there is absolutely no hope for unity. Because we have some problems with roots, uh, with uh, the problem of root surfaces, it's a bit technical uh, thing to explore. But we want, we st we still hope to find a strategy to select one canonically. This is the minimal model part, right? So the unicity problem, so it's the unicity problem uh, beyond. The the curve case, no hope for unicity, up to isomorphism uh, for unicity. So the problem uh, becomes uh, how select a canonical one. And this goes to the MNP by Mori, the minimal model problem, right? Uh, but it is minimal with respect to a given a starting variety or for the whole class? Uh, uh, the minimality problem isn't really minimal to any order, they say. Yeah, uh, it is uh, chosen canonically with respect to uh, the starting uh, initial but simple variety or No, no, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Okay. 
I'm not really an expert on, the, on this particular problem, but um, even trying to find minimal stuff is not, even trying to make sense of the minimal uh, component here, uh, you arrive at problems because if you define minimal as the one who, uh, through which most of the other um, models factor by rationing properly, uh, then even then you won't have uh, minimal uh, unicity. So it really is just a, a real strategy to find uh, the canonical one. So the, the, the world is, uh, should be more canonical, really. That should be more the, 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 the emphasis. On the So let's test this like that. Okay, okay. Makes feelings. So, bi-rationality is more or less okay. It gives you isomorphism uh, between the op open subsets here. Basically, what we want. Uh, so, this should be the first point, this is the second point, and the third point is that it creates isomorphisms between open subsets. So on the one hand you have x uh, well deprived of uh, its uh, uh, you take x but then you of course need to remove the singular point and the best thing would be to want to have uh, this uh, be isomorphic to x uh, bar deprived of so the best case scenario you would want to have is this, so that uh, so that the smooth load was is perfectly preserved uh, like that. But the problem, to say that the problem naturally arising in this situation is the following: What happens to the rest of the what happens to pi minus 1 on the single locus? Well, that's where the second component of this comes into play. What is proper? Okay, so, so properness is a pretty technical uh, condition to uh, state and to justify, but the the main, well, the, the origin comes from proper maps in topology. So if you remember, proper maps in topology is just maps uh, between topological spaces in which the inverse image of a compact space uh, is also compact. Uh, now, this, we had some technicalities to show it in. Uh, 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 algebra, because in algebra we don't really have any topology beyond the very rough stylistic topology. Uh, but mainly the idea is to compactify very easy. So, what do I mean by that? Well, a very, uh, let's say, uh, naive way of uh, getting rid of singularities is just to take the smooth clothes. Right. So we have, let's see, how do they, okay, x, the smooth locus, and then you just inject it inside of the uh, projective variety. Mm -hmm. But that may not be uh, enough, because here then you obtain something which is not compact anymore. So remember, we have here a projective variety. And, and usually when you 
we use projective varieties uh, for a reason, because it is the algebraic version of compactness. Right? So if we take out uh, points, then it, does, it is not compact anymore. So we would like to compactify the smooth bones. And so we have and this way of taking this bar, and we would like to obtain then a morphism between this compactification and uh, the original X. So we want this compactification, we want it to be uh, tame, right? to not be too violent. We want it to be tame. So that there is no really, uh, let's see. So, okay, let's see. Work this way. So by adding points, we don't really get, first of all, too far from X so that we can actually build this morphism on one hand. But we also want it to be as close as possible to our original uh, variety because of the potential applications we want. Let's see. Okay. how this properness condition works, but it's, uh, if you don't really like it, but okay. So how do we, uh, how to define it? Well, the idea is that there are no missing points. and we have the morphism pi here and the following thing uh, works like this you take a curve, a smooth curve here okay and p is a point <coughs> on the smooth curve and you have this image so this uh, morphism would be proper and for any curve like this, if I can find a curve image inside of X, so, uh, X like this, okay, so I have my curve, my, let's say my singular curve, it looks something like, uh, something like this, and my curve is something like this, right? Oh, not two. Okay. And if I have a curve, I can lift the curve out, uh, up, uh, upstairs. So let's say that now my curve, my uh, surface is like this. Then I can actually complete the curve upstairs. Is this the unique or this one? Meaning that I can't have two two things that go like this upstairs whenever I lift the curve upstairs so this does not work for a proper map ok this is the, the rough idea of how we define properness in uh, algebra ok Okay. So let's say now a little bit uh, about 
uh, what? We have a resolution of similarity. So here I'm just going to state only a couple of applications of resolution of similarities, which are fairly common. So, well, it's a, it's a general philosophy in uh, algebraic geometry at least, and mostly general. Geometric problems that smooth objects are easier to deal with than uh, singular ones. And whenever we uh, do any sort of algebraic manipulation on uh, varieties in algebraic geometry, there is no real control on the singularities. Very often we will have constructions that necessarily involve singularities. And to, in order to work with them geometrically, we often need smoothness. So the inspiration comes from differential geometric, let's say, um, uh, constructions. Or topology. So here we talk anything about cohomology. Anything we do in cohomology, everything is very easy to do to work in the smooth case. So if you need chunk classes, very often you need resolution singularities. Hodge theory, anything uh, in Hodge theory uses very often reduces to the smooth case. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, intersection theory. In order to intersection theory. For instance, one of the very important uh, studies in uh, even beyond geometry, in uh, the IF and geometry, is uh, trying to study the intersection theory on a smooth surface. So you are deal, you are given a uh, what is called an arithmetic surface. Just imagine it's a, it's a surface like that. Okay. And you are interested in how do two curves on a smooth surface like this intersect. For instance, if you want to define the intersection multiplicity of two curves on a surface, you can't really do it on a single surface. It's uh, far more technical and usually it goes to the smooth uh, to a smooth model beyond before you can just define it. Okay, um, so another case, another very interesting case is the riemann roch theorem. I, I should even say theory, but because there, there's way too much to say to uh, confine it to the theorem. But the riemann roch theorem uh, originally was proved for smooth curves, then smooth surfaces. And in order to uh, generalize the riemann roch theorem, we need the resolution of singularity. So this, uh, so this comes from. So, so incidentally, uh, Riemann was also motivated by, uh, by this, uh, by these results, and uh, to prove a certain version of the resolution of singularities. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, okay, there, there are many, even recently, okay, I'll, I'll just mention it already, but even recently, some people who do a study non commutative uh, geometry, so people come from Kafkaan, uh, were interested in singular objects uh, because they deal with foliations, and they are realizing, slowly realizing that most of the foliations they deal with are singular, so they need to have a know how to deal with singular foliations, by which obviously we mean that they need resolution of similarities of these uh, particular geometric states. Okay. Uh, Andre, I just wanted to mention that uh, one example where singularities appear very naturally is when we have a group acting on a smooth manual. Oh yeah. And then if we take the portion space, then we get yeah, yeah. singularities. So this yeah. is a very 
especially uh, typical when situation for differential geometries, for example, or physicists. Or representation theories, representation theories when they are dealing with modular spaces. Yes, yes. Because modular space, okay, so I'll, I'll just write this quickly to that. So this is uh, something I uh, thought vaguely joins what I was saying about uh, cons vague constructions before. Okay. Uh, whenever we have a rough algebraic construction, we are uh, dealing with singular objects. Okay. So, moduli spaces and group actions. So, okay, maybe just already, if I have, okay, so let's see, if I have uh, G acting on a variety, even if it's smooth, uh, X, J, so the fixed points of this action might not be So we, we would need a resolution of this here problem in order to uh, continue working in our problem of let's say representation here. Another one is that if you want, uh, we want for instance to compactify Modular spaces, we would need to add singular points. So, of course, the problem comes to wanting to find compactifications which are not too wild, uh, hence, this, uh, okay, this interest in. Uh, uh, okay, well, there, um, I also mentioned before the classification problem, so I'll just So I'll just mention that it's mostly more is uh, minimal model for you. Maybe I just want to ask one, one, one more thing that perhaps we discuss. Yeah, yeah, there's also a lot of, okay, maybe I forgot to mention here a lot of more basic stuff, like, you know, you want to define uh, integral. Basic stuff. Yeah. yeah, for example, there is this basic problem of computing volumes of uh, compact algebraic varieties. So the volume, you can define it for singular algebraic varieties, yeah, that's uh, not a problem, but uh, computing, integrating the volume form over a singular object is not easy. But you can integrate it on the smooth model by rational fit, and because the smooth model and the singular model, they differ in a set of measure zero, yeah. or dimension one, so <laughs> that does not affect the computation, so to speak. So it's a very basic motivation why we, why we need uh, smooth models. Also symplectic forms, uh, not just volume forms, but yeah. many types of different types. Let's see, what, why, uh, okay, yeah. Well, um, there's actually similarities, I guess, in many places, like here, I would have talked about uh, okay, so the last question is when was the So here it's mostly I want to at least tell you a couple of uh, historical landmarks because I think it's important to know from when to when and when when was when was what is the sentence when, when was, was the resolution of singular? Problem, 
well, indi indi indirectly, it was a pretty old problem dating back to uh, Newton, actually. So, services. Uh, with Newton. And it's no, no, don't, oh, don't, don't worry. Yeah, but it's uh, uh, something to be discussed among us later. <laughs> Okay, so Newton uh, and uh, the way he did is prioritizing branches of plane fields. So this, so when you have a singularity, let's take off most common node. A branch, a local branch of a plane curve would be something like a small uh, piece of the curve like this. Another branch would be the one beneath it like this. So Newton devised a method of parameterizing branches of plane curves. So what happening is uh, just you take an equation in two variables in C2. Very basic case. Uh, and uh, in 1950, Fizeux rediscovered, let's say, the same thing. But in, he was more interested, let's say, in the parameterization themselves instead of the, the instead of the geometric problem, let's say. Okay. Uh, then, okay, so of course you realize that between these two periods a lot of progress was made. Uh, this is why I say that this, at first it was mostly incidental. Newton wasn't really looking for, uh, was looking for resolution singularities. It really is with Newton with Riemann. Specifically, smooth, what we call smooth Riemann surfaces associated to a polynomial equations. His interest was mostly what we mentioned the Riemann block, but also abelian integrals and the study of what we would today call elliptic curves. So he mostly used, uh, let's see, what did they say here? So complex analysis, complex analytic, and uh, uh, algebraic topology, topological methods. So, mainly covering spaces and the ramification of covering spaces. Uh, so, should I continue with this or maybe? Revert back to basic. No, no, no. Continue with this, but let me tell you another technique that we might try. Instead of erasing like that with the opposite side of yes. the branch, do it sideways. Sideways? Like, yes, like that. Okay. So maybe okay. Yes. there will be just one stream of water <laughs> okay. going yeah. down from the blackboard. Yeah, that's not so important, I guess, what's, uh, yeah. Okay, and now, ah, yeah, exactly. Let's see. Yes. Yeah, it's oh, like this. probably not here, right? Or <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, but uh, it was like, okay, I was doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that's not good. Uh, like, it's a socket, so I okay, maybe not there, right? But, okay. So, okay, so we have Newton's construction, it was purely topological. Okay, he was really interested in more complex analysis than. Uh, Issues. So, what were the case for the uh, general abstract algebraic geometry? 
Well, we had to wait the 1920s, well, actually even before that, uh, we had uh, the Italian school. So, the Italian, well, it, it was really before that, but the Italian school were uh, beginning to, uh, the Italian school of to do like geometry, but they were trying to do all these uh, general constructions with these very elegant uh, methods. The problem was that they were not rigorous. They would take a problem and they would say, oh, we just need to deform this case so that now we have a more generic case where things are smooth and simple and we just need to, we can apply our constructions there and everything works out. The problem is that these, uh, uh, these reductions to these uh, generic cases we have to be has to be justified, and unfortunately, some stuff happened to be false in these uh, in these uh, methods. So, the f but the first actually uh, rigorous proof was by uh, well, for plane curves was Max Noether, but for general curves was Alvarez. Via projections. So, if you remember how we uh, uh, studied projections, if we have the plane, uh, let's say a plane here, I take a point and I project by looking at what happens to these. Here. So I project to I have a projective curve embedded in a high dimensional projective space. And I take projections from a singular point. But then in order to prove that his method actually works, he needed to define multiplicities. And uh, use linear systems. Which were, among other things, one of the main achievements of the 1920s in that project. Uh, like this, okay. Now, then we have uh, methods that were more direct, so this was an algorithmic method. I use one projection, then you have another projection from another singular point, and so on and so on. So one method that we looked uh, directly was Walker, who used, who generalized the method of the one of the other methods of the Italian school that didn't uh, didn't work, but managed to to uh, fill in the gaps. And the one I presented as weak was Zariski's method via normalizations. So this one, these were methods that were direct, to, let's say one step method for resolutions in practice. Okay. Of course the the study of thinkers is actually somewhat of an uh, interesting uh, problem of itself, even if it was completely solved. Uh, there are still many, many, many things to say about the uh, resonance of the curves. Even just the plain curve case is a, a very a fairly interesting uh, problem to study, combinatorically speaking. It has, uh, surprisingly enough, uh, applications to combinatorics, uh, and uh, and uh, some number theoretic problems. Okay, so let's see. Uh, okay, so that should be a pretty good idea for curves at least. But what about surfaces? Okay. So proceed. So surfaces I only mentioned in passing a couple of times. Uh, mostly when uh, we studied normalization, remember that uh, I gave you an example of a normal surface that was singular. Namely, 
of the core. Right? So the surface, well, the surface case was a bit more challenging problem to solve. So we still had uh, uh, a lot of the techniques were, came from Delipedio and Vetolevi. So still again the Italian school. But uh, the really uh, innovating methods were by Again, by these two, because they, in, in the works they published in 1959, they actually uh, were interested in the surface case. They just proved the curve case as, um, uh, as a, let's say, a preliminary, uh, preliminary result. Uh, so, again, 35 is Walker, and 1959 with Zeliski. So let's focus a bit more about Zariski because he was really the one who championed the solutions in the in uh, the 30s and 40s and up to the 50s. And even today, his influence on the problem is still, uh, uh, it, it, it's still, uh, it's still very different. Uh, so we mentioned that he used normalization, but uh, we know that normal surfaces have isolated similarities. So meaning uh, these are things that should be seen as point, points, pointed parts of the surface. So then what does he do? He then blows up these uh, these uh, similarities. So a blow up is something I didn't really I only mentioned in passing already, but a blow up is something that um, to permits to uh, uh, let's say uh, it's. It's even in the in the language itself. Uh, if you ever saw uh, mechanical diagrams, you know that the program, the, these diagrams where you see all the parts decomposed and uh, simple uh, simple lines showing you how they are connected. This is called the blow up diagram, and this is the exact uh, same idea for the blow up construction. So I'll just sketch to you what the blow up looks like. So let's uh, blow up on the point. So imagine you have a point here, uh, and you want to see what this point, uh, this, you want to separate, okay. Well, this is a nice drawing that uh, maybe you have already seen on uh, Shavarevich's book about uh, algebraic geometry. You have all these dimensions that go from uh, this one point, and you want the blow up to be able to separate all these points. So, how do we do that? Well, you will take actually something of a more in strip above it. So, the way you do, okay, so the way you draw it at least is first you take something of a, uh, let's say, a, a spiral like this. Say yeah. Okay. Mostly like this. So this looks, let's say this would be A2, and this will be something of a way of this. Okay. And if I want, okay, so maybe the the you can you can't see. Okay, it's then goes be beneath it, and then you can see it again. Uh, and the red part is just the fiber of the point we have been blowing up. So let's, let's say I want this curve here to be somewhere above. So it will probably find itself here. It will intersect the curve somewhere there. And then this curve here will be above it. You can learn a line, so 
Yeah. Uh, let's see. Tuck, tuck, tuck. Maybe this one. This. And then another one. This. And in fact, uh, okay, so you'll have these. Okay, maybe I, my drawing is not really good. Yeah, this. Okay, good. Like this mostly. Because then this will be behind it. Like that. Okay, so any, uh, any point on this uh, red line will actually uh, represent one direction of how you come uh, through this point. And uh, okay, this is just a picture of the doing uh, of, of one point. There's a general construction of a uh, but I won't really mention it. Just remember that it's meant to inspect separately um, the information that is embedded in the neighborhood at, of, a, of a specific one. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if you're, you like it, but you can also draw, draw the cusp or the node. Ah, okay. Down yes. there and show what happens to it under this transformation. But I'm not convinced it will look very good on this picture. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's difficult to start when the picture is already a bit uh, yeah. heavy. Adding stuff generally is not no helpful. No, but it's a, it's a picture in hard job. Oh yeah, yeah, it's a picture in hard job, and he no, he does for the note. Yeah, not the cusp. Yeah, I said I said I got the cusp for the note. Oh okay. yeah, yeah. Well, the cusp is a little bit more easy. What would this actually look like? Okay, let's, uh, let's see which one was the thing. Okay, so I guess let's, this is better. Yeah. Let's say my node is here. That's a question. Okay. Oh, because I always confuse it. So I know. So uh, it's tan. So remember that it's tangent. It was this line here. So it's this line here. So the way this curve would find itself up would be something like yeah, non-singular. It is non-singular, and uh, yeah. And what's important to here is that this blow we substituted the points with a compact object D1. Yeah. So which are all these points over the red straight vertical line. Yeah. This is a P1, and each point of P1 parallelizes exactly one line going line line to, line to the origin. Yeah. Yeah. This. So, yeah. well, okay, yeah, the, this, is what the, the, this is a very simple case because we have resolved more or less the similarities in one step. <laughs> right? yeah. But sometimes even uh, more difficult tests need uh, several blowers. Several, uh, I mean, more complex, meaning that the power was defined in the cusp, so this was the cusp uh, uh, y3 minus x2, oh, yeah, meaning that the powers here are higher. Okay, so this was mostly, okay, so let's, uh, 1940s. Zaleski was using, uh, was starting to use different techniques for resolution of similarities, very much different from these. Uh, meaning he used local uh, valuation theory. Now the reason why he used valuation theory was mostly because it, it was, uh, 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 these were logic that were becoming more and more popular through Cognitive algebra, but also in his own work, he really uh, saw the potential for this uh, for its application, notably for, from the local uniformization problem. Okay. <coughs> uh, so the idea is to find, so I take uh, a domain here, so imagine you have a local ring. Of like a, a variety, and we want to find a model, right? Uh, that actually.
actually dominates the uh, uh, by, uh, that dominates by rationally this local ring. What does this mean? This means that they have the both of the same factory field. R is included in R bar and M is also is actually exactly the trace of the ring component of the maximal ideal product. So this is what we what birationally dominates. And this actually seems to be a straightforward problem. However, it's, it is a very complicated problem uh, that we don't know how to solve in general. But what are the properties of this R bar, did you say? Oh, no, it needs, yeah, it needs to be seen. Oh, okay. Uh, what you just did, it's a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, a regular point, but yeah, it's smooth, regular, you know, that this whole thing is a big mess at this point. Okay. So, uh, Zariski managed to prove it uh, algorithmically in, uh, for the positive, for zero characteristic. So let's see, where was it? Uh, okay, yeah. So 1940 exactly uh, for the zero characteristic case. So this was Zariski's contribution. Uh, and he didn't really manage to prove it for positive characteristics. This is actually an open problem today in full generality. However, one of his uh, students, Abian Ka, managed to prove uh, used local implementation for a resolution. Uh, this is a Uh, of surfaces in all characteristics. So this was a pretty involved proof. Uh, already he had to prove the local uniformization for positive characteristic and then use it to solve the similarities of surfaces. So his contribution was pretty, uh, pretty uh, consistent, but uh, very, very big. It remains today one of the more technical results of his. Not to mention his uh, uh, subsequent contribution, which was the resolution of solids. Resolution of solids, except for characteristic 2, 3, and 5, which is a very old of 3 or no? Four? Three four. This is four three. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Solids. I mean three four. Yeah. I Some people use solids. I don't know how. Is it a match like that? No. 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 Say, uh, uh, I saw this was in a. I think it was a Russian author who used it, but okay. I don't know. Okay. Uh, and in order to complete the remaining cases, we had to wait a long, a long while. Uh, well, long is relative, of course, but I mean, as recent as 2019, uh, the works of Poussard and Pilton for so they used local uniformization. Uh, plus ideas of Giro uh, uh, to solve free forms in general. And this was this is a very, very, very big uh, contribution. I mean the what the, the works that are, that are involved in this problem are quite uh, dense and difficult. There are hundreds of pages of articles well, of uh, uh, 
mathematics, several parts of the proof for needed to prove. Now, the problem is that these methods have been a little bit obscure. Uh, for a simple reason was Hironaka's contribution. Really, one of the things that uh, some people regret <laughs> was uh, Hironaka's contribution to resolution singularities because in 1966, he proposed a method through blowing up, right, but general blowing up. Uh, so, singularities for all varieties in zero characteristic. And so, of course, this, uh, this was a very difficult uh, proof as well to, to decipher. And the, one of the things that is uh, a bit uh, infamous in, uh, in the subject is that not many people uh, can actually understand the proof. Uh, you said propose. propose. He actually did. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but he, you know, it's a, it's a method. He proposed his method as being one that is you know, good, supposed to be good. But the, the, the reason why I said that is that some people don't, um, well, don't really yeah, like this uh, method because, for one, it is very technical, as I said, but it's also uh, very obscure. We don't really have any more geometries. Uh, everything is encoded in this algorithm he defines of blowing up uh, maximal subcompact, uh, maximal contact subvarieties. So for that, he really invented a whole arsenal of, con of uh, concepts. Maximal contact, for instance. Well, these are uh, these are specific uh, sub varieties that are located inside the single locus itself uh, of the variety. Uh, one of the problems in positive characteristic is that you cannot even define maximal contact. Well, that's one of the problems. Of course, he today uh, claims he has a program. So this one is proposed. Uh, he has a program uh, where he tries to, to explain how to generalize his methods, uh, positive characteristic, but it's still highly conjectural. I was, I was kind of afraid uh, when I started my own PhD because I stumbled upon his article and I was uh, afraid the problem was solved and I had nothing to do anymore. <laughs> but it turns out that it is uh, mostly uh, research. I want to, uh, Andre, I'm sorry for interrupting once again, but yeah, I want to say a funny story. Yeah, it's a resolution of singularities. First of all, uh, Hiromaka got the Fields Medal for it. Yeah, yeah. For, for a long period of time, this was considered one of the hardest proofs in mathematics ever. Yeah, yeah, no. So almost 200 pages. Nobody understood it in nanos and mathematics, but Hiromaka tells this funny story. Uh, this was Zariski's favorite problem, and Zariski tried to solve it for many years. He, in fact, announced the wrong proof in Princeton. So that was kind of an embarrassing moment for Zariski. Uh, and uh, Hironaka started working on, on, on this in the 60s at Harvard. And at the most critical period, uh, when he was producing his proof, he avoided seeing Zariski on campus. Because the risk will constantly tease him. How is your proof going? <laughs> so they had a table bacon. This is the funny story. And Hironaka would hide behind the bacon and wait for Zeriski <coughs> to go, take his coffee and croissant, and leave. And after that, Hironaka will go in the bakery <laughs> to, to, to get breakfast just to make sure that he avoids the risk, yeah, to avoid this kind of very painful moments for him. <laughs> But of course, the risk was very proud of this student once the group was completed. Yeah. Um, how would you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you need to do this uh, from top to bottom because it's all dripping down. I yeah. Think. Uh, Don't think of a solution of this. Yeah, because this is, this, uh, this is really nice. Not ideal. Okay. 
Um, so let's okay. So let's see. Let's lastly let's talk some weaknesses of this problem because the problem was so dense, so difficult that some people wanted to find um, simpler proofs, and people actually did find a lot simpler proofs. Uh, so simplifications. And we can. So let's see. One of the one of the people who simplified a lot of the what well, two people was Brill and Nilman. Let's see. No, Bierstone and Nilman. Sorry about. That. So they found. Uh, uh, let's say more uh, simplified version of this. Of course, as you can imagine, due to the biting and the dates, uh, a lot of work was involved in that. Their the goal was also to find more canonical, uh, functorial uh, resolution similarities. Uh, and okay, there was also Rodarjik, but I don't, I, I don't even know how to. Pronounce his name so. Yaroslav Vodarch. He pronounced it. Yaroslav Vodarch. Okay. He contributed a lot with these weighted blow ups. A weaker, okay, one of the interesting parts was Bogomolov and Tante. Bogomolov. This is our pocket. Yeah. Maybe some of you know him, I don't know. Uh, found weaker versions where they don't. Uh, they don't restrict the the blow up space. The blow up space. In Hiroaka, Hiroaka's proof, he really used the maximum contact for his uh, resolution similarities, which gave him a very strong result, a very good control on the inverse image of the simple proofs. Uh, but if you don't restrict yourself to that, then they, you can manage a fairly uh, an easier proof, at least shorter proof, that's for sure. Um, however, you don't have the same control on the blow-up space. Uh, so these are some simplifications. Now, there for the local uniformization problem, uh, well, no, it's just say okay. uh, so instead of uh, using birational proper maps, there was another contribution that was uh, undertaken in 1996 by uh, Johann Johann Maybe that's how we Where instead of using uh, birational here and proper. He only restricted it to the dominant morphism. So it's subjective and uh, so the um, and the idea is to allow k x bar to be a finite uh, field extension. And this is this was done, the problem was done in any characteristic. Uh, so for any characteristic. So this was a pretty considerable uh, breakthrough. Unfortunately, it was uh, it used very abstract methods. Nobody used the modular spaces of curves, a specific genus, and uh, we don't have any control over this finite field. Extension. We don't know if it's big enough. We don't know what kind of uh, algebra uh, extension it is. You know, it could be separable, permeable, separable, etc. Now, uh, however, the techniques used have found a lot of applications in uh, well, number theory, but also in toric geometry. <coughs> uh, and this inspired uh, other people to solve. Oh, no, I should have done. Yeah. 
Uh, this inspires other people to solve uh, weaker versions of the local infinitization problem as well. So first was uh, Knaf and Kurman. Let's see what date was that. It was fairly recent, 2009. Well, this was Knaf and Kurman. So they are mostly interested, especially uh, he is especially interested in valuation theoretic problems coming from modern theory. But he met, they both uh, managed to find a uh, solved if we allow uh, finite extension of the fa uh, function field. And in 2013, Denkin uh, showed that this extension for just you can just take it as being uh, purely inseparable. <coughs> he calls this uh, purely inseparable local uniformization. However, how big of it is still a very difficult problem. Actually, uh, well, the one guy who manages to have probably a very good understanding is Francisco uh, Kuma with uh, his uh, uh, study of the defect. Somehow, allowing finite extensions of function fields. Um, uh, absorbs this ramification uh, quantity called the defect, which appears when you start evaluation theory. Okay. But so the local information problem beyond that is still a pretty pretty difficult problem. It lost a lot of traction uh, because of Hironaka's work, but it has gained a little bit of a um, uh, popularity in the recent years because of uh, Spiragovsky's work, who also thought that he had a proof in the 90s. Unfortunately, there was an error, but uh, he still managed to push through a lot of contributions in that aspect. Most notably, uh, another proof of uh, the service case, uh, which was fairly funny. Okay. So I think this, uh, this gives a nice picture of what the problem is uh, today, so I'll just end here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, I think maybe we should say in the very beginning, just to outline that the big problem yeah. is the resolution of similarities in positive characteristics. That's uh, open. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not yes. sure if you mentioned it, maybe I was away from when you mentioned it, but it's... Uh... No, I mentioned uh, that I was going to come. Yeah, and this local uniformization uh, approach yeah. is one of the approaches yeah. that uh, might lead to a resolution of singularities in positive characteristics. Uh, people have very strong opinions in algebraic geometry about their yeah. own methods. I, I haven't seen anything like that in uh, mathematics. Flashing <laughs> 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 each other, no. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. No, but, but you see, Zaiski tried when he, when his student found, when I found his problem, he still continued to work on resolutions in the United States because he wasn't satisfied with the problem. Uh, 